Hey guys, welcome to part number three of sharing my testimony on this channel. My name is Olven Ace, and I'm going to jump right into it. So the previous one I talked about my uh, experience growing up, being a professional sportsman, car accident, paralyzed, dealing with depression and nearly taking my life, but making the decision to follow Christ and choosing life and not death. Now, soon after that moment, oh, should I say, if you haven't watched those videos, I'll link it above and put it down below. So go and check that out. Uh, so this video is going to make a lot more sense to you. So right after that moment, that near-death experience, almost taking my life, I started seeking the truth. I started seeking, um, okay, so what happened? Because the guy that found me, Hosea, he took photos with my phone. Now, I'm going to put up the photos on the screen right now, but I do want to say um, if you are sensitive to that kind of content, to car accidents, there is a little bit of blood, but it's not like horrific photos. But if you are sensitive to that, then just skip skip ahead to, to this timestamp. Skip ahead then. Um, but for those that are okay with it, I want to show these photos so you can get a context of what I looked at and the and the questions that I had. So in the photos, you can see the guy that found me took these photos. And in the photo, you can see me lying directly next to the car in a fetal position. Now, I fell out the car as I described in part one of this series. I fell out the car upon impact, which is about 50, 60 yards backwards. The road and where the car ended is about 50 to 60 yards into an open field. I fell out on impact. The only place that I could have fallen out was the passenger window. As I said, that's what I remember. And you can see the car was completely crushed. No door can open. No other window was even broken. It was only the passenger window that was broken. So it's very clear and obvious I went through that window and I fell out on impact. Now, in the photos, you can see the tracks of the car, how it came to stand still in the field. But how on earth did I end up on the driver's side in a fetal position, almost like someone placed me there? And I was so close to the, the car that my clothes scraped off the dust from the car. And you can see that in the photo. So I was looking at these, these photos and I was asking a question. I was like, Lord, how on earth did I survive this? How on earth did I survive this? And I was, I was blown away. You know, looking at these these photos and the guy that found me, he gave me his number and my father also had his number because they were on the phone when I was on my way to the hospital, when the ambulance picked me up. And I thought, well, I'm just going to phone this guy because I need answers. Let me just talk to him. I need answers. Okay. I looked for his number on my phone. I looked for his number. This was only a few months after my accident. This wasn't very long, a few months. I looked for his number on my phone, and guess what? I couldn't find it. Gone. Nowhere to be found. I said, okay, Dad, do you still have his number? My father looked on his phone. It's gone. He doesn't have his number. And then I felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit say, go have a look what his name means. And the name Hosea is a popular Bible name, um, or in those times. And the name Hosea means he saves and he helps. Now, guys, when I read this, when I saw this, I was blown away because I then realized that, and no one can, can tell me anything different. I've been through this. The person hasn't come to light. Despite all the media attention, if you're in South Africa, this, this story and testimony has been well documented. And I believe that's all part of God's plan for orchestrating, you know, the healing. Um, it's well documented. That person has never come forward, has never contacted me or anyone. 
And this is a, a public story. Like many people know it. I'm not shy. I talk about it. I call his name out, everything. He never came to me, never appeared. And when I realized that God has sent an angel to protect me from that car accident, it changed everything in my life. Because I realized that God is not done with this story. God has a very specific plan with not, you know, my life, but yes, this story, this, he's going to use it for his glory. He's going to use it for the kingdom. And that's why I am so assured that God is going to use this testimony and the healing for tremendous work of the kingdom. If we read in the Bible and we read that there were single healings, the blind man at the gate beautiful, uh, the, the paralyzed man at the, the pool of Bethesda. Everyone in the city knew these people. And when they got healed, it sparked a revival in that city. It got everyone talking. Everyone knew that Jesus is the healer. And guys, that's what I believe God is going to do with this testimony. That because so many people know about this story, so many people know about my testimony. I believe that the day that God heals me, it's going to be like undoubtedly his work, his handiwork. It People cannot deny it. There are medical documentation. There is hundreds of photos and videos on social media and the sporting events that I mentioned in, in chapter or part one. All the evidence is there. And my biggest prayer is, Lord, use this testimony for your kingdom. Use it. Magnify your name, Jesus. Use this testimony to your glory. And that's why I am submitting to God's will, timing and planning for my healing. He knows exactly when is the right time to heal me. So we're waiting for that. And we're trusting for that. And I'm believing for that. And I'm praying for that. So from there, I want to fast forward a little bit. I told you about my background, being into sport, loving sport. Um, when I got back to living again, adapting to life in a wheelchair, I got back into sport. My love for sport grew again because it's who I am. It's a part of who I am. You know, irrespective of my condition and my situation and my circumstances, I, I enjoy sport. I love being active. So... I went and I got into rowing and from rowing I went to cycling, hand cycling and from there I took on a challenge to do an Ironman, a full distance uh, triathlon which is a 3.8 kilometer swim in the ocean, a 180 kilometer cycle and then a 42 kilometer run which I do in a racing wheelchair. Now, I chose the Ironman because it is something so ridiculous to do, physical. It's, it's one of the, the most difficult physical endurance races, challenges that there is. But I, I have the conviction in my heart that if God is with me and God is for me, that truly nothing is impossible, that I can, that I can go for it, I can do this. Um, you know, so I am, I'm completely fearless with God on my side. And I, I specifically also chose something because I knew that no South African paraplegic has done the Ironman in a wheelchair before. There are other events that I've also done that were world first events that a paraplegic has never done in the world, like swimming from Robben Island to Bloberg, which is a very popular swim here in South Africa and in some parts of the world as well. Um, where it's an endurance swim, eight kilometers in Atlantic Ocean, which is very cold. There are some sharks. Um, they do shark cage diving actually in that area because of the amount of great white sharks that there are. But it's a very, you know, interesting event to do. And God was setting the scene of completing these events and kind of creating a platform in sport. Now, after doing those kind of things, 
I, I've always been involved in ministry. I've always been uh, testifying at schools, d- preaching in different churches. But all the while, the focus was actually professional sport. Now, many people ask, so how did I get into ministry then? Coming from professional sport, how did I get into ministry? As I said, the two kind of were going hand in hand, but everyone just saw the sport. But they knew I was a Christian. They knew I loved Jesus. And then when the time came, when when I finished doing Ironman in 2021, uh, November, I did my last full Ironman. And when that time came, I really just felt the prompting of the Lord say, I want you to focus on ministry now. I want you to focus on just preaching the gospel. Do not compete anymore. So for the past two years, I have not competed. I'm training. I have done a race or two, but I have not competed professionally in two years. Um, so I do believe that, you know, God is is busy with something. He's setting the scene now. Um, and from that, the prophetic ministry was kind of birthed. Now, I had a few encounters with the Lord where he called me into the prophetic ministry. And those are personal encounters, you know, between me and the Lord. So I don't share those encounters with, I don't think I have shared. I've shared maybe with a few people, like a handful, a handful of people. Um, but I... That's something that's personal between me and the Lord, and I really want to cherish that. So um, that was kind of the the setting apart phase of when God called me into prophetic ministry. I had a few encounters, and that's when the ministry was birthed. Now, the interesting thing is, and I'll end off with this, that in the times of my deepest, darkest moments, those rehabilitation, those nights alone, you know, really just being down in the dumps and throughout all these events of my life that these, you know, being knocked down and having to get up again the whole time, in those moments is where I cultivated a relationship with Jesus, where I learned to hear His voice in those deep, dark moments of my life. And that's, that's truly where the ministry was birthed, as I mentioned previously. That in those moments that God taught me how to tune into his voice, how to silence the world around me and focus upon what is the father saying about my situation. And that is the core of prophetic ministry. It's not about prophesying houses and cars and all the great things that you're going to do and for the Lord. No, it's hearing the voice of the Father or hearing the heartbeat of Jesus for that person. And that, that will hit their spirit harder than any material fleshly prophecy out there is hearing what is the Father saying? What is, what is the heart of, of the Father for that person? So maybe in, in next videos, I'll share a bit more about ministry and how I I fully stepped into it. I just gave you a little snapshot of it. But I do believe that you got the idea um, of, of what I wanted to say in that. But guys, yeah, that's that's basically my testimony in a nutshell. I can keep you here for days on end. But yeah, let's let's end it there. And thank you for, for joining. Thank you for being on this channel. And um, I do believe that the Lord has beautiful things in store for this channel. As I said, I want to document my healing um, process, the journey. I want to I want to share it with you all on this channel. And I do believe the time is near. It's just something that I can feel in my spirit. But thanks for joining. And guys, I also want to ask you, if you want to join my Patreon uh, support page, I'm going to put the link down below. And you can see behind the scenes stuff Uh, get more prophetic insight on different words that we share. We have Q&As that we do. Um, It's a beautiful community and it also really does help myself and the ministry to do what I'm called to do. So go and check that out if that's something that you want to consider and make sure that you are subscribed. Give this video a like and I'll see you then in a few days time for another video. Bless you all.